Hello guys and girls and welcome to the next update of Oxygen Not Included. This is Rancher Mark 1 because there's more stuff to come later on but there's been a whole ton of stuff added to do with catching, wrangling, breeding, grooming, all sorts of stuff to do with the critters in the game. And we are going to look at all the new updates that there are and to help us with that we've got a whole bunch of critters flying around all over the place. So here we go, let's dive in. Uh, as you usual there's some new machines that have been added let's maybe take a look at these first of all so under the food menu that we've got here we've got a new critter drop off looks a bit different that's going to change slightly as well you can see temporary art so as of me recording this video this is the morning after the release of this update it's still temporary art at the moment uh, we have a critter feeder we have the incubator so these are all found in the food menu uh, these we've seen before. So this is the Critter Trap and the Critter Lure. You've seen those before. There's critters all over the place. And then if we move into here, we've also got the Grooming Station. So we're going to talk about each of those. Uh, to go along with the grooming and the training and all that sort of thing, of course, you've got a new research. So as you look through all of your research, you'll come across at the top here the Ranching Research to manage and care for critters. So that gives you the drop-off, the feeder, and the grooming station. And then when you get up to animal control, that gives you the option of the incubator. And then, of course, to get all of this working, you are going to need somebody who has a particular job. Um, and that is the rancher. So we're going to remove that there. We've got somebody who can do ranching and a seasoned rancher, which comes after they've been trained in the farming trait. Uh, it gives them the additional job training of critter wrangling. Uh, they can use the grooming station and they get plus two to ranching. So they're now capable of performing the ranching jobs. And then the seasoned rancher has the same, but another plus two to ranching. So that's very cool. So if we add somebody in here that can be a rancher, we'll be able to do that. So I'm going to be using the debug menu to do that. So we can control F2, drop somebody in, and we've got Marie. So let's go back to the job screen and rancher. There we go. Marie has been picked as a rancher and she immediately gets the hat because we're in debug mode. I did have a job board here if she needed it, but she doesn't. So Marie is now able. There we go. She's very pleased with her new job. She is now able to look. She's calling the animals to her. She's going, woohoo, come here, come here. <laughs> I love it. So she is now grooming the animals. Oh my goodness me. Look at that. We need to get a picture of that. That is absolutely fantastic. So animals in this area will be groomed. Uh, if we check this animal here. Oh, look. There's lotions being applied to his back. He's getting a rub. And he is much happier. So let's take a look at this pup. Um, he's starving, so that's something else that we'll need to talk about in a moment. But he is now groomed. His happiness is changing plus 30 a cycle. And that's going to carry on for another cycle. Because he's been recently attended to by a rancher. That then increases this happiness score down here, which is something else that's been added. We've got health, happiness, reproduction, and some other information as well. Uh, obviously, the happiness there, the higher the happiness of the critter increases their productivity so what it is that the critters are producing and also their egg laying rates as well so we might see some eggs appear and also the satisfaction knowing they're living a good little critter life so that's really good uh he is getting a plus 30 from being cycled uh plus 30 cycle for being groomed unfortunately minus 30 uh from starving so that won't help there we go the slickster's just been made happy at the minute reproduction at zero let's have a look at this guy here Reproduction still at zero. Oh, it's the hatch's turn. There he goes. <laughs> I'm loving it. That is fantastic. He is going to get groomed. Very nice. And we'll see how happy he is. It might be easier to give him something to eat. So he's not starving. Let's click on him. Uh, reproduction zero. Happiness. Yep. So he's just got the happiness going. And it's going up 51%. So it may be that very soon we'll see some eggs we will have to see. But you get the idea. And also we can now wrangle creatures. So for instance, let's pick this guy over here, this hatch. And down here we have an option to capture the critter alive. So that's slightly different from this here. We do have one in a critter trap. And we do have the critter uh, drop-off point. Uh, critter drop-off point, which is here. So they'll still be trapped and taken there. But now they can be... I mean, that's still capturing them alive. So we've, just, we've got the two options at the moment. Um, but if we leave that one to be wrangled, and then hopefully... 
I think you're busy over there. Let's drop somebody else in to help you out. There we go, Nisbet. And I believe she's going to come over and wrangle this critter. She's going to get a bag out of her back pocket. Oh. There we go, and dropped him off there. <laughs> are we duping du Are we duping critters? So that's two now that need to be wrangled. Let's see what happens. Are you going to go and wrangle them as well? But you get the idea. They go in a bag and they get dropped off. Yeah, look, he's not going to be wrangled, is he? Let's cancel the wrangle and let's cancel your wrangle. Okay, let's do this wrangle again just in case because it happened before Nisbet arrived. But anyway, you get the idea. Stuck in a bag and then dropped off. So, of course, then to also help, we have the feeding station. We can now give items to our little critters to feed them. I'm still looking for information on what they like. I mean, for instance, these normally like CO2. So, uh, carbon dioxide CO2. So, I'm assuming... Oh, hang on. What does it say there? You can burn lots of calories before starving. Oh, hang on. What's going on here? Somebody's being wrangled. There we go. Look, we knew it had happened. Yes, there we go. They've been wrangled, picked up in the bag. Uh, that's what Nisbet was doing, was picking up the bag that was there. So it looks like it's only the rancher that can do the wrangling. Well, that makes perfect sense. But yeah, there's different food that they can eat. We obviously know that the hatches will pretty much eat anything, uh, which is good. So I'm going to drop some food in here and see if we can get our hatches here to try and give us an egg. Well, after some testing there, it looks like the hatches will no longer eat things off of the floor, which is very interesting. I wasn't expecting that because they've always done that. So we need to add our dirt, if I can find it in here, to our feeding station and then allow this guy, here we go to come along and eat this so if we add that in there thank you very much nisbet she's going to store that dirt in our feeding station we can change how much that holds there we go dirt 200 kilograms oh it's literally one piece of dirt well maybe we could change that there we go nope 200 is the max yep 200 is the max so whether this guy is going to come along here and eat some of this it will be interesting interesting to see well, from what I can find out, they will still eat the same things they've always eaten. This must be a fussy hatch. But don't forget, this is a really, really early release of this game. So, things may change as always. If you also look at each of the animals, you get their capture method listed down here. So, luring for the flying guys as always. Trapping or wrangling, as we saw the trap that was here before. Or wrangling with wrangling in a bag. And who's the other guy? The shine bug captured by luring so there we go that's a lot of the new additions to do with the machines and the jobs but there is even more you'll notice that this is in a room a new room bonus has been added that is the stable so uh, critters will be more productive and less hostile in a room like this also the grooming is going to help uh, to make them happier as well so we could see uh, a lot more eggs uh, being produced in this room and then when you get your eggs that's eggs as well as whatever they normally produce so you know if you get your slicksters set up in a room where they're groomed i don't know quite what the increase in oil would be but that would be interesting to see then you can add your eggs here into the incubator to grow even more creatures so Assigned duplicates must be critter wranglers when we know about that. We have a pufflet egg, a hatchling egg, a shine nymph, and also a missing strings creature, <laughs> which of course is the slickster it looks like as well. So these four creatures, can their eggs can be incubated and we can get even more creatures. I don't think at the moment there's baby critters, but who knows, that may be added later. But there is even more in the game. You may have noticed a new icon up in the right hand corner here, which is the browse database entries, or you can press the U key to open that up. You can search the database, you have things listed. There we go, critters for instance. Oh, morbs as well, completely forgot about those. We need to find more, some, <laughs> some of those as well. I don't, whoops, people are dying. I don't think they have any eggs, they're not listed. Uh, in the game there but there's a lot of information about all of the different things in the game which is absolutely fantastic so you can go through <laughs>
Sorry about that. That's all my previous dupes that were held from me test previous versions of the game. You can go through and you can read all about all the different things in the game. Not every single thing has got information, but I would say 99% of it has, which is really, really handy for when you're learning about the items in the game. So that's something new. We spoke about the job screen. It's been changed again. We now have this screen here, which is the same as before. Uh, but you notice at the bottom, there isn't the pop-up section for the jobs, uh, with, which we'll come to. We've also got this option in the corner here. Duplicate priorities can only be changed manually. And you can turn that on and off. So now it's duplicate priorities are automatically reconfigured when they are assigned a new job which is quite good so it's automatically if you've set somebody up to do all sorts of things and then they you say well i'm going to make them a minor you could automatically have their priorities change which would save you a lot of you know intricate button pressing and things which can sometimes take away from the game if you don't like that sort of thing but you can toggle that on or off the priorities screen has now been added into here. So we can change the priorities as you can see. Left click, click makes the priority go up. Right click makes it go down. So rather than a numbering system, that is the way it is going to work, which I think is very good. Um, and you can also prioritize up and down every single thing for that person. So excellent. Very, very handy. And it will make things a lot easier. Just while we're talking about priorities, yeah, you've still got one to nine. Right, for our next new item, we need to start a brand new world to show you some new exciting things that have been added to Terrain Gen. Okay, so here we are in a brand new world. And if you want to get some of the new Terrain Gen items that have been added, this is what you're going to have to do. So what has been changed? There is, at last count, and this may go up, um, <laughs> 13 new different types of of geezers geysers whatever you want to call them wherever you're from in the world or fumaroles as they also have been called as well which is slightly different acting to a geezer geyser so let's have a look around and show you some of the new ones look what's that that's a cool steam fumarole it gets over pressure let's just have a look apparently it's, there's gas on the side a highly pressurized geezer that periodically erupts with steam. So that's similar to how they used to act before. It, it looks differently. Um, you do actually now need a researcher to go and study this formation. So you can't just find them and immediately start to use them. It says that a full analysis will take time, but it should yield useful results. As it stands at the moment, you need a... Let's have a look. Where is our scientist? A tenured scientist. You see there the trait geological feature analysis. So let's be honest, normally with the research, it all gets sped through quite quickly. And it's not that difficult to get a scientist up to the top level. So get yourself a tenured scientist. They've still got uses now after research has finished. And you can send them out into the world to find the geezer geysers. So let me quickly flick through and show you some of the different ones there are in the world. So here's what I think is one of the most exciting ones. We now get ones that give us metal. So if I dig away that there, look, refined gold. So eventually this will, there we go, reach a pressure where it will erupt gold. So let's speed this up. Uh, you get gold, you get copper, you get magma, and you get iron. So now refined iron and gold and copper is no longer a limited resource. Let's just give this a second to speed up and we'll see it erupt some gold. Here it comes, it's erupting. So what are we seeing drop out of the bottom here? We're getting a liquid gold, which is then cooling down and turning into a refined metal. And that will be the same for the copper and that will be the same for the iron as well. Uh, this is coming out at, let's have a look at the temperature, quite a hot temperature. The liquid gold is at 2626.9C. Oh my goodness me. And it's cooling down reasonably quick. There we go. I think that's finished. Let's have a look at the temperature of this. It's at 90, 80. So that is dropping down. But that is a way now to get uh, refined gold, refined iron, and refined copper in your world. 
but there's more. Of course, we have the oil reservoirs as normal. Natural gas, that can come in a geyser or it looks like this fumarole sort of shape as well. So that's slightly different. We have a cool steam fumarole. So normally steam would come out quite hot. The temperature around here is still 44, 46. The water's at 38. So if you can find one of these in your world, then you are definitely going to get an easier access to cooler water. I'm going to speed this up a bit and see if we can get this one to erupt. Here we go. It's erupting. The temperature is 100 degrees C, so still quite hot. Still quite hot, but not as hot as normal. And then that's quickly cooling down to a cooler temperature. That's a slight change, but there's more. Well, this is one of the more interesting ones. This is a slush geezer. And if we have a look at this one, well, we can see it emits polluted water. I've just opened up a hole here to let this out, which is really interesting. So we can immediately get hold of some polluted water. It seems to be coming out absolutely freezing. That is boiling, but it's coming out. Well, it's called slush, isn't it? So I don't know whether the temperature of this is going to be changed, because I would expect then this to be cooler if it's letting out a cool liquid. But cold polluted water, there we go, that's minus four degree, uh, minus 9.4. If we were to find one of those, I think that would be really interesting. An easy way to then convert that and have nice cool water. Yep, great addition to the game. Okay, how about this one? A liquid CO2 geezer. Ah, yes, so we're going to be getting carbon dioxide out of this. Pump that into a slickster farm that have all been ranched up and happy and producing all your oil. Another interesting way of going about. That is at minus 35 degrees. So even though that's hot, it's coming out nice and cool. Maybe a way to cool your base down. Get all your dupes <laughs> breathing CO2. What a plan. But there's more. By the way, just thought I would mention that most of these are hidden. Unless you look really closely to see the neutronium base on these, these new ones are hidden away. So you have to go out and find them. If you want to find them easily, you can get the temperature overlay. And generally, the neutronium will sort of stand out. Even in this biome here, it's harder to see, but it will stand out. Of course, if you're in debug mode, we can just remove that. There we go. What have we found? A hot hydrogen fumarole. So that is about to spit out. Some hot hydrogen if it hasn't already. Yeah, it looks like it has. Filled with hydrogen. Let's speed this up and get this to spit out some more and see what happens. Yep, there we go. So it looks like the temperature's around about 30, 35. Not much higher than, you know, that's pretty dealable with, isn't it? So, yep, that's quite good. That may change. Uh, emitting hydrogen, there we go. That may change. I would assume it's going to be a lot hotter uh, once this is released but we shall see ah it looks like there's also other variants we've got a hot co2 fumarole before we had a cool co2 fumarole so there's a slight difference as well aha here's another one a chlorine gas fumarole i'm not quite sure what temperature that is going to be appearing at but let's see if we can speed this up a bit and see what happens yeah, there we go. It looks like it's coming out at sort of 20 degrees, 20, 30 degrees. So that is not too bad either. That's very manageable. I would assume that there's going to be a hot version and a cool version of this as well. Um, worth mentioning that every world you find is not going to have every single geezer geyser in there. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going through this map and I'm hunting for different ones uh, to show you. But that is, there's a huge list. Uh, let me just actually read down the list of all the different ones that have been found at the moment while that is running at full speed. So we've got the steam, and these can come in geysers, volcanoes, or fumaroles, and there's hot and cold varieties. Steam, oil, um, natural gas, slush, copper, magma, iron and gold, chlorine, uh, liquid CO2. That's all the ones that I've found so far. If there is any more, let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to see. But as I've said, not every single world is going to have all of these. So it's going to make for some interesting and different gameplay. Um, some people may or may not be happy with that. They may want to have everything in every world so they can build all the different clever things that people come up with. But for others, that might be quite good because it means every playthrough is going to be different. You are going to have to learn to deal with your surroundings and what the map has given you. And I'm assuming there's going to be a load of comments saying, you missed one, there was one right there. But, you know, I'm talking and looking at the same time. So you will forgive me. 
Well, it seems I found a small volcano hidden away here. Let's speed up the game and get this to hopefully explode. There we go. Let's just read what it says. A highly pressurized geezer that periodically erupts with steam. Oh, okay. I'm not sure that is true, but let's actually see what happens. Well, poor Stinky here has been drafted in to analyze this small volcano because when you look at the information here, it tells you that the active period requires analysis over here. So we're going to see what Stinky can come up with. Uh, hopefully he's going to survive and give us that information <laughs> before he dies. Let's find out. So how about we give Stinky some new food? Oh my goodness me, is that an egg on the floor? Yep, if you go into our electric grill, you now have an omelette. Fluffed and folded egg innards. 2,800 k cows though. Quality standard plus two. So there is a good reason for breeding up <laughs> your animals so you can eat the eggs. Very nice. He's still working away down here. It has taken ages so far. Right, we are almost there. Stinky has been doing a sterling job. There we go. So they now add on to the side of a volcano. It's almost like a little analysis uh, thing. So analysis has been complete. There we go. And what do we know here? Eruption period 79 seconds every 10,094 seconds. Active period for 32.2 cycles every 59.6 cycles. Next dormancy 28 cycles. So the volcanoes aren't going to be erupting and running all the time. But depending on what you find, it might give you time to build your contraption, your cubicles or your rooms for catching whatever comes out of the volcanoes you can use it later and really sort of plan ahead it's certainly adding i think a whole new extra thing to the gameplay one more i found a hot water geezer there we go it's a specialist operated building we're now getting hot water out this at about 90 degrees ish so slightly different from your steam to water geezer geysers that you'd normally have so what do you think about all the new additions to the game i am absolutely loving them i think they're really really cool different changes in the world means all sorts of new contraptions and things people can come up with new food new looking after the animals breeding there is so much to get your teeth stuck into so if you want to see me play with all these new things i'm not sure i'm going to convert my lp world over to this just yet i think i've got one more episode that I've recorded in the uh, last update, the occupational upgrade. Uh, but I will certainly be using the ranching upgrade Mark 1 after that. And then ranching upgrade Mark 2, that is about six weeks away. We're going to see what all those new additions will bring as well. So don't forget to hit subscribe to stick around for that. Leave a like if you enjoyed it as well. And I will see you guys very soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.